Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And forget not all of his wonderful benefits. What benefits you talking about, preacher? Food on your table. Clothes on your back. Shoes on your feet. Roof over your head. You're in your right mind. Praise, he's worthy to be praised this morning. I don't know if you recognize it by now. But from the rising of the sun until the setting of the same, the name of the Lord is worthy to be praised. And I believe I got about five or ten people in here this morning that have been through enough hell in this past week that you can stand up on your feet right now and you can lift up your hands and say, thank you, Lord. Now, for those somebody may be looking and say, child, well, it don't take all that. Well, let me just tell you, you were not there when God dried my tears. You were not there when God was a peace that surpassed all understanding. When I didn't know how I was going to make it and how I was going to survive, God lifted up a standard against the enemy and let me know that he had my back. God is worthy. And I got to ask you a question. Who wouldn't serve a God like this? He's too just to do any wrong, too wide to make any kind of mistake. And let me tell you, you sometimes got to hit your lowest point in life before you recognize that God is everything that you need and God is everything that you got. I say it like this. Sometimes you got to hit rock bottom before you appreciate the rock that's at the bottom. God is good. God is good. Y'all, I, I, I'm, I'm preaching already. I ain't, I, ain't even got, I ain't even got that yet. I ain't even got that yet. But let me tell you, I, I'm just having flashbacks right now, right? You just have to excuse me for a second. I'm just thinking about moments in my life where it could have went another way, but God saw fit for it to be another way. And let me tell you, it wasn't no doctor. It wasn't no person. It wasn't no lawyer. It wasn't this. It was nobody but Jesus. Nobody but Jesus. Come back down. <sighs> God is in this place this morning. I don't know if you recognize it or not, but God is here in this place on this morning. All throughout the praise and worship. I don't know about y'all, but I just been up here in a zone all by myself. I ain't worried about what nobody else is doing. Worried about if they standing up, if they not standing up. Worried not if they lifting their hands, if they not lifting up their hand. But I got up this morning and I purpose in my mind. If don't nobody else want to praise him, I praise him all by myself. Because God has been good to me. Go ahead and tie my mule up real quick. <laughs> Sit him right there real quick. Hold on. I'll be back for you in about 30 minutes. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. <sighs> Let the church say amen. Church say amen again. God is good how often? And all the time. Find somebody close to you and say, neighbor, God loves you. And I do too. And if you love me, as much as I love you, then nothing can break. I love in two. Amen, 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 amen. Surely our God is worthy of the praise on this morning. Amen. I'm so thankful for, again, another opportunity. Seemed like I was just here last week. Was it last week? Week before last. All right, all right, yeah, that's, that's just as good. Week before last. Amen. I'm just so thankful to be back here with you all on today and especially for this day to honor the leader of this flock for the past 44 years. I can't put up with some folk for four minutes, but 44 years. God has blessed you to labor here. The good shepherd. That was a flock that was lost and afraid. It wandered around without direction for days. But the Lord looked down with compassion from above and sent a good shepherd to lead them with love. The shepherd was kind, loving, and wise, and he cherished his whole flock, no matter the color or size. Though the shepherd was quiet, humble, and meek, every ear listened whenever he would speak. He showed them the way to walk in the light 
And he prayed every day for God to give them true sight. He taught them about the blood of the lamb about the creator, the great I am. They flourished and they grew through the knowledge they gained and the savior from above who lived without blemish or stain. The flock was so thankful to the Lord up above for sending a wise leader who was so full of love. He led them with a strong and good gentle hand and one day will take the whole flock safely into God's promised land. Thank you for serving in the capacity that you have for the past 44 years, and I pray, hope, and trust that God will strengthen you, your life, your mind, and your body so that you can continue for many more years to come to stand four square on his word and continue to share the good news of Jesus Christ with Duval and surrounding counties. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Hey man, I, I, I brought, I brought, I called the party down with me this morning. So thankful for my, my brother Tyler. He came down with me though, though that long, that ride. I drove all the way, but just know you driving home. Amen. <laughs> amen. He, amen. He came down with me on this morning. So glad and glad to have my boy Heron came all the way all up the street from Quitman, Georgia. Amen. Thank you for coming and, and being with us um, here on this morning. And I got to take this chance for those of you that are watching this via live stream, we want to let you know that you are just a part of this service this morning as we are. And we pray that you are listening and that you are a part of this worship service on this morning and that you will be blessed. And if you are in the area, do yourself a favor. Come on down to 7009 Wilson Boulevard. Here at the Sweetwater Church of Christ where the gospel is preached. You heard it from them. You hear it from me. So come check it out. Amen. Joshua chapter 5. Joshua chapter 5. Amen. Uh, it's 11.44. So I, I'm not going to be before you long this morning. I'm, I'm going to give you a, a, little, some, a little Sunday school lesson. I'm going to let you out. That'll be good. Amen. Joshua chapter 5. Joshua chapter 5. And I had read verses 5 through 9, but I'm going to start at verse number 1 and read down to verse number 9. That's all right, so we can get a good understanding on this morning. He said, out of all thy getting, get thou and understanding. So I pray that you leave here with some understanding on this morning. Pray that you leave here not saying, child, we had church, but leave here saying, I met Jesus when I went to the house of God on the day. Joshua chapter 5, Joshua chapter 5, we're going to begin in verse number 1, and I pray that you would read along with me. The Bible says, when all the Amorite kings west of the Jordan and all the Canaanite kings who lived along the Mediterranean coast heard how the Lord had dried up the Jordan River so that the people of Israel could cross, they lost heart and were paralyzed with fear because of them. At the time, the Lord told Joshua, make flint stones and circumcise this second generation of Israelites. So Joshua made flint knives and circumcised the entire male population of Israel at Gibeah Herolah. Joshua had to circumcise them because all the men who were old enough to fight in battle when they left Egypt, had died in the wilderness. Amen. Those who left Egypt had all been circumcised, but none of them born after the exodus during the years in the wilderness had been circumcised. The Israelites had traveled in the wilderness for 40 years until all the men who were old enough to fight in battle when they left Egypt had died, for they disobeyed the Lord, and the Lord vowed he would not let them enter the land he sworn to give us, a land flowing with milk and honey. So Joshua circumcised their sons, those who had grown up to take their father's place, for they had not been circumcised on the way to the promised land. And after all the males had been circumcised, they rested in the camp until they were healed. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away the shame of your slavery in Egypt, so that the place shall be called Gilgal to this day. Shall we go to our Heavenly Father in prayer? Amen. Most gracious, wise, and eternal God, we thank you on today. We thank you, God, for just being God and being God all by yourself. There's nobody greater. There's nobody higher. Can't nobody do us like Jesus. And can't nobody do us like the Lord. Father, we pray today that you just throw your weight around us on this morning. Be in this place on this morning, Father. I ask that you would hide me behind your glorious cross. 
Father, that no flesh will take any glory, Father, in what you ought to have. And, Father, at the end of it, we'll give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. It is in the name of Jesus we pray that all God's children say amen. amen. At the moment that they were about to enter the promised land was also the moment that they faced the biggest crisis in their life. Isn't it funny how it can be the worst of times and the best of times in your life all at the same time? I mean, on one side, it's all well and good. But then on the other side, all hell has broken loose in your life. Let, 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 it's, let me break it down. It says that they are about to possess the promised land. They, they are not equipped. They are not ready to face the battle that they are about to fight. And they are at the door of the promised land. Let me tell you, an opportunity is not really an opportunity if you're not prepared for it. It's dangerous to go through a door that has been opened and you are not really prepared to go through that door. They would not have been afraid to fight. They were born to fight. They were trained for this. Their fathers could fight. They fought against the Amalekites. They wrestled them and whipped those folk down their head to death. But now they're getting ready to come up against Jericho. Jericho, Jericho, the Bible says, is greatly shut up. Walls all around this city. And Jericho was so advanced that they had chariots riding around in the walls of Jericho. Had their own transit system going on back there in the day. And, and the wall was so sick that the chariot could ride around in it. And these are a bunch of farmers wandering around in the wilderness about to fight the fight of their life with no experience. And if that was not enough, it was at Gilgal that Joshua goes out, now easy brothers, hold up right here, and gets a flint stone and sharpens it to a knife to circumcise all the men. Now you already can't fight. <laughs> See, the sisters are right, but the brother's like, whoa, right now, you know? Circumcision is an important part of the Bible. Circumcision is a sign of the covenant. Circumcision is a sign of the covenant between the individual and God. It means that I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Now, it was a sign of the covenant. Now, it was not the covenant, but it was a sign of the covenant. It gives me a distinction in the Old Testament from a covenant person and a non-covenant person. It starts with Abraham, and Abraham bore a sign in his body that he was in covenant covenant with God. Now, circumcision is quite important. And in the New Testament, it is typified by baptism. It is a symbol of the putting away of the filth of the flesh, the part that serves no real purpose, that part that has no real properties into it, just flesh with no life in it. Isn't it funny how something that has no life in it can still cause you pain? Let me come down your street real quick. Isn't it funny how a relationship that has no life in it can still cause you to be laid up in the bed at night not being able to sleep? Uh, it's hard to give up stuff when the stuff you're giving up is the stuff that you don't need. I ain't going to mess with that right there. I ain't going to mess with that. I ain't got time for that. But I got to educate you for you to understand that in scriptures, circumcision is normally done by the father to the son. So the text takes the time to tell you that the reason Joshua, who is not their father, had been left with the task of circumcising them is because their fathers died in the wilderness and they died without circumcising their sons. Watch this. According to the scriptures, they should have been circumcised on what day? At eight, day, eight days old. But when you don't get what you should have got as a child, it's hard to be a grown man trying to go back and fix something that you should have got when you was a child. It's hard. That's why you got so many child men walking around, people that don't really 
and know who they are. People that have grown up physically, but they have not grown up mentally and spiritually because they did not get what they needed as a child. And it's hard to be a man trying to fix a boy problem. And here we are, now Joshua's having to go back and fix what they daddy should have did. But the good thing about God is that even if you don't get what you should have got when you should have got it, God got a way of making it up to you. Somebody here knows what I'm talking about. I didn't, I didn't get it, but I made it anyway. I had to crawl by myself, but I made it anyway. I had to deal with my own issues, but I made it anyway. Ain't it funny how God will bring somebody in your life to replace what you didn't get when you should have gone? That's why I give God praise. I ain't praising God for no watch, no shoe, or no shoes. I don't praise God for no house or no car. I praise God for his grace, and I praise him for his mercy. See, see, so see, see, God says you're too close to where you're going, and God said, I can't let y'all go in in the shape that you're in. So I had to bring you down to Gilgal so I could fix some stuff. And when God gets ready to take you to Gilgal, don't fight. When God gets ready to take you down to your place of change and transition, don't fight with God, but say, hey God, if this is what you want in my life, have it. I had to deal with my own issues, but I made it anyhow. But I should tell you that fixing stuff hurts. Being angry is an easier thing than saying I'm sorry. Sometimes when you have to go back and fix some stuff, it hurts because when you go back, your flesh got to die. And even though you don't need it, sometimes it hurts you to lose your toys. What kind of toys you talking about, preacher? The temptations of your youth. It's hard to let go of it. So, so here they are. Here they are. And they have come to Gilgal, which the place gets its name. Write this down. It gets its name from what happened. That's where it gets its name from. It means circle. It's the place where the circle of the flesh was cut preceding their next move. It's the place where they recovered what they did not get in their past so that they could be released to go even further. But the problem is they are here and they're hurting. Have you ever felt like that something great has happened in your life and you felt like God has been by your side all up until now. And now that it's time for you to conquer Jericho and go into the promised land, you're hurting. You're wounded. And you're weak. And you're struggling to try to find the strength to do what it is that you need to do. But if you come over to the New Testament, I remember a man by the name of Paul who went to the Lord on three different occasions and he asked him, Lord, remove this thorn from my flesh. And God said, no! My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Can I tell you something, sweet water? You are only strong in the broken places of your life. It is only when you are weak and you allow God to come into your life and show you his mighty power that you are able then to be strong. So here it is, they're here and they're hurting. And the Bible says that they stayed at Gilgal while they healed over what they lost, over what just happened. And at a time when most preachers are telling you what all God will give you, I want to tell you that God's going to take some stuff away from you. It's not popular, and it probably will never end up on anybody's CD. But on your way to glory, 
there's some stuff that God is going to cut out of your life. Some stuff you thought that you would never lose, but it has to go in order for God to be able to rule and reign in your life. And let me tell you, God is not going to be your Santa Claus and just keep giving you stuff to play with without making you man up and cut away what is standing in between you and your real proper. Somebody holler, cut it away, Lord. She got it. She got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want you to say something that losing stuff is only a sign that God got something better on the way. Ooh, here it is. They, they, got, they got cut. They got hurt. They had to heal up because something better was coming. The next element of the text says that when they got healed, come back about two verses after verse number nine, around verse number 11. It says that when they got healed, they ate the corn of the promised land. And when they tasted of what was in front of them, let me, have you ever had, felt like you just had a foretaste of what could happen in your life? You recognize, say, if I would leave this no good person alone, this no good relationship alone, then maybe things would be better in my life. If I would stop being so in other folk business and mind my own business, maybe things would be better in my life. If I would change, this could be what my life could be. Have you ever had a foretaste? of a place in your life that you had not reached just as of yet. But here it is, you're not there, but you can almost see, you feel like you can just reach out and reach out and test. See, I believe that if you can believe God for the impossible, he will do the impossible in your life. See, we put God on the limitation. We, we just believe in God to get us up, take us to work, and make sure we get paid on Friday. But let me tell you, I believe God for the impossible. What man says cannot happen, I believe it can happen in the hands of an all-powerful God. So, come, come, and he says, let me tell you, and first of all, you got to be able to see, not just physically, but see what God is able to do in your life. And trust that what you cannot see, trust God for the outcome. Here it is. You don't want nobody around you that can't see nothing. You don't want nobody around you that can't see nothing because here it is. They will drag you down. Give me somebody that can see. Ask your neighbor, can you really see? I'm almost where y'all want me to be. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. But I want you to understand is that the moment that they tasted the corn that was in front of them, the manna that they were used to eating ceased. And the Lord said, don't be afraid when your old blessing stops because it's only a sign that I got something better prepared for you. Oh, y'all will get that on the way home. See, see, now, now, now I got to set the stage for you. We got here. We've gotten up to the point. Now let me set the stage for you. We got a bunch of young men who have zero skills to match up to their situation. They are poorly equipped for where life is taking them. They're trying to be something that they don't know how to be. And nothing is funnier than seeing a little boy with his daddy's shoes on. <laughs> Clumping around the house. Playing the role. Acting like something on the outside that you're not on the inside. And ain't that what most of us are doing? Playing a role. Acting like something on the outside that isn't happening on the inside. And so God brings them to Gilgal so that the inside can catch up with the outside. Because when your persona gets bigger than the person, then who you have become will kill who you really are. You'll catch that on the way out. Because all of your accomplishments have nowhere to rest when they're bigger than what you are. So he brings them to Gilgal so that they can catch up with their own life. Because sometimes... Life get to moving just a little bit too fast, don't it? Now, here's the situation. 
They have no skills to go forward, but they have the situation to go forward. They have just undergone a painful surgery, to say the least. And they've had a job change, a provision change. They're not getting it where they used to get it, and now they're getting it from someplace new. And God says, you have to make a choice. Either you're going to resort back to your old place and remain comfortable and miss the opportunity. I forgot to give you the sermon title, didn't I? Turn to your neighbor and say, Lord, make me uncomfortable. So God says, you got to make a choice. Either you're going to stay here and remain comfortable and miss out on the opportunity, or you're going to have to want it bad enough to leave your comfort zone. That's the biggest problem of Christians. We get comfortable. We feel like this is the best that I can do. This is the furthest that I can go. This is the highest height that I can take. But let me tell you, the last thing that God did in your life was just minor as to what God can do. Trust God. Let me tell you, sometimes if you really want to do what God will have for you to do, it's going to scare you sometimes. What I mean, preacher, it's going to scare you. It's going to scare you because you're going to have to leave what you're used to and what you are accustomed to to step out into a place that you do not know, trusting God for where it is that you are going. But let me tell you, the same God that kept you in what you knew will keep you in what you do not know. So here it is. For me to step out of my comfort zone, here it is, I got to leave some stuff behind. Yeah, yeah. Come on, and let me tell you, if you really want to be used by God, your life is going to be uncomfortable. That's it. Preacher, tell them what I'm talking about. If you really want to be used by God, you want to be a leader in God's service, your life is going to be uncomfortable because you cannot settle. You cannot just sit down and make, and make a seat and say, we're going to stop right here. This is as far as we can go. But you got, to, you got to constantly be in the presence of God in prayer and in supplication, seeking God for an answer. Lord, I don't know the way, but I'm trusting you you for the way. Preach, I'm sure it's been many times in your ministry where you've had to say, Lord, I don't know how but I believe that you can and trust God. That's what it takes. That's what it takes to live this life, to survive and to make it. Trust God. And when you trust God, can I tell you this? Eyes have not seen nor ear heard nor has it even entered into the heart of man the good things that the Lord has prepared for them that love him. Here it is. A lot of people will never evolve in life because they don't want to be uncomfortable. They good, right, just where they are. Could be further along in life, but they settled simply because somebody else said you were not fit for it. I want to know, whose approval are you really seeking? Are you seeking God's approval? Or are you seeking approval from man? Are you seeking approval from man or God? Because let me tell you, man will qualify you. And man will also disqualify you. But only my God can call you. And let me tell you, when God calls you, God will put his stamp of approval on your life. And no matter where you go, no matter what company you are in, folk have a way of knowing that's God's child right there. That's somebody that belongs to the Lord. That's somebody that belongs to God. Here it is. We don't want to pay the simple price of being uncomfortable. If you want to be excellent, you're going to have to experience some discomfort in your life. So here they are. Here they are. They, they've come and 
It was about 3 o'clock in the morning. He said, tell my people you're going to be sore, but you're still going to get there. Amen. Wait a minute. You're going to have to learn how to be satisfied with this new cuisine because I will no longer feed you with the stuff that I was feeding you with. And for the first time in my life, I really understood the walls of Jericho. For the first time, preacher, I really understood the walls of Jericho. What do you mean? You remember the plan that God gave him at Jericho? It is the only city in the Bible that was taken through this kind of plan. He says, I want you to march around the wall once a day for six days. Go around once and go back and sit down. I never took into consideration that these boys had just come from under the night. And if they would have had to just go up there and fight their way in, they would not have been ready for battle. Suddenly I realized that God has taken their pain into consideration. Now wait, 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 what are you saying? What are you saying? Now, 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 all you functional people, you may not understand what I'm talking about this morning, but for all of us dysfunctional folk, y'all know what I'm talking about. Because God says, I know you're dysfunctional. And I know you're hurting right now. I know you're not well. But if you'll follow my advice, if you'll follow my instruction for a wounded man to take the city. So all you well folk, you got to give us dysfunctional folk just a moment to give God a praise. He said, I know you're too sore to fight. So I have devised a plan that if you just walk with me, you ain't got to walk too far because you're going to get the victory one step. You're going to get the victory one step, one step at a time. And at the end of those six days, take your rest. And on the seventh day, when you're feeling better, I know you can't fight that good, but the battle is not yours. This battle belongs to the Lord. And here it is, he said, on the seventh day, I don't want you going there fighting nobody. I don't even want you to go in there and scuffle. You ain't got to do nothing. Here it is, on the seventh day, shout. You ain't got to fight nobody. On the seventh day, after you have walked with me, on the seventh day, all I want you to do, shout. And if you will shout, God said, I'll give you the city. Now, y'all don't understand this, that some of the biggest things that will happen in your life are going to happen this way. What do you mean, preacher? They're going to happen through the Joshua principle. Come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're going to be uncomfortable. I wonder if I'm talking to anybody this morning. Maybe even right now, you're in an uncomfortable situation. Lord, I do not understand with my giving self, with my coming to church every Sunday morning self, with my there on Wednesday night self, they turn the lights on me because I stay. Turn the lights off on me because I stick back so long. I'm, I'm that faithful in what I'm doing, and yet I'm hurting. I'm broken. I'm wounded. I'm blinded, trying to figure out my way through life. But here's what happens with the Joshua principle. It all comes by trusting in God. Come on. Yeah. That's, it. That's it. The first six days, can you see them now? Step by step. <laughs> Hurt. <laughs> Hurt. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Yeah. 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 Swole. The, 
they're limping. They're bruised. And they're hurting. Because of what they just had to go through. But because God said walk. Still they're trying to put one foot in front of the other. And let me tell you, even when you feel like you can't go any further, you still got to put one foot in front of the other. Keep putting one foot in front of the other. Walk until your change come. Walk until your blessing come. Walk until the door is open. Walk until God makes a way. Walk on with God. Because let me tell you, after you done got through walking, folk looking at you crazy. What you doing all that for? Being obedient. This ain't for you to understand. This is between me and God. So if people don't understand that, and you're walking while wounded, you're walking while you're yet bleeding, you haven't yet really healed over the last hurt that you went through. And do y'all understand what it is to be hurt and feel like you cannot make it? And while you're trying to walk, here comes another hurtful situation. While you're trying to walk, here's another door slammed in your face. While you're trying to walk, here's another battle that you got to fight. But yet and still. I'm struggling to make it. But I still got to walk. I can't see my way at times, but I still got to walk. And sometimes, let me tell you, when I don't feel like walk, I might have to get on the ground and crawl. I might have to crawl. Let me tell you, sometimes I might have to help somebody to come along and help me make it. Help me. Help me to bear, because sometimes, y'all, if truth be told, we can't bear this cross alone. Come on. And, and sometimes when you're going through what you're going through, it's nice to have somebody that you can trust, Come on. that you can call on and say, hey, I'm going through a dog yeah. moment right now, and I don't really feel like praying, but I trust you to get a prayer yeah. through to God on my behalf. Yeah. Yet and still, while you, you better pray. you're walking, tears in your eyes, but yet and still, you're walking. And at the end of the walk, God said, now, now I know that you trust me. Now I know that your faith is really in me. Because through your pain, you have persevered. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. So through your pain, you have persevered. Through the darkest of nights, you have held on. You have not cursed my name. You have not given up on me. But even through it all, you're still saying, Lord, I'm coming. They don't want to come to church no more, but Lord. They've given up faith in you, but Lord, here it is, yet and still, I'm coming. And at the end of it, God said, now that your faith has been put to the test, and I've seen that you're willing to put in the work to pass the test, give me a shout. Give me a shout, and I'll give you the victory. Victory is already yours. The way being made, the door has already been opened. God just wants you to get up off your do nothing soon. Lord, I don't understand at times, but that's what it takes. It takes blind faith to be able to make it with God. Lord, I don't know. Peter knew beyond a shadow of a doubt he couldn't walk on water. He knew he couldn't walk on water. But trusting in God, let me tell you, you can walk on the water. And now, 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 don't none of y'all go down there to the river trying to walk on the water. But let me tell you, trusting in God, you can walk on the water and your shoes won't even have a drop of water on them. 
trusted in God, let me tell you, you can walk through the fires of this life. And when you come out on the other side, you're just as fresh as you was when you walked in the fire. Let me tell you, that's the kind of God that we serve. Because you got to understand, even while you're walking through your hurt, you're not alone. Yeah. 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 I want to speak to somebody this morning and tell you, it's in the you pool. are not by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Do I walk through the do, do, does anybody know what it's like to go through a night season and feel like you're by yourself? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Somebody laying in the bed right next to you, but still you feel like you. Got plenty of folk that you can call and talk to, but yet and still you feel like you. Because you got to realize that your life and your worship is a personal relationship with God. And let me tell you, it takes a personal relationship with God to get a personal thing in your life fixed. You know what it's like to call folk and ask them for help? And they do what they can, but they couldn't really do what you needed to do to get the problem alleviated out of your life. And after you called everybody in your phone book, message everybody on your Facebook, DM everybody on their Instagram, tweeted everybody on your Twitter, you just had to reserve yourself to the fact only God can do it. Only God can take a bad man, turn him into a good man. Only God can take your sin sick soul. Dip it in red blood, it come out white as snow. Only God is able to transform your life for the better. So I want to know, are you going to trust God on this morning? Are you going to trust him? Are you going to trust God for your salvation? Don't trust in man. That's our biggest issue. Because we trust in man, and when man falls, we equate that to God failing us. Come on now. You said something now. What do you mean, preacher? That's why when stuff happens, at, at, you look at it at various churches, when something happened with the preacher, first thing for one to leave church. That wasn't your God. He was just an instrument, a servant through which to be used by God. Your hope ought to be built on Jesus Christ. And if your hope is built on Jesus, if your faith is in God, you can always expect a favorable outcome. Yeah. And Amen. even if it doesn't work out for your personal good, yeah. Come on, make that God, got it. it's all working out for God's providential oh, good. Yes. I'm sure Joseph sitting in jail, how is it supposed to be good? <laughs> I didn't interpret that joker dream, told him to tell them about me. He ain't said nothing. And here I'm down here in jail. Suffering, struggling, because somebody who saw the value of what I could become was intimidated by it, so they threw me into a pit. I'm sure he under, he questioned himself many times and questioned, Lord, well, how is this supposed to be good? But do you see how throughout his painful experience he trusted in God yes he did never gave up on and because he trusted in God God took that man from being in prison to being the second highest in command in all of Egypt can I tell you just one moment is all it takes for God to turn your whole life around just one moment is all it takes for God to turn your situation around. But you first of all got to give it to him. And be willing to be used by God even though you're going to experience pain. Can I tell you something? I'm almost done. I'm almost done. This, this, I, I just really feel like this is blessing y'all this morning. And I, I, I want you to understand Stay something. with it, bro. Stay with it. Pain will come to everybody. Yes. 
how you deal with the pain Say it. Say it. makes the difference. Yes, sir. Makes the world a difference. Either you can take the pain, let it get down on the inside of your heart and fester and take root. Now you're walking around feeling sorry for yourself. Yeah. Now you're walking around and you don't really have the energy or the desire to go out and fight and trust in God like you really need. But you take that pain with a pill of grace. Take that pain with a pill of mercy. And you'll find yourself that even in pain, I'm a survivor. Even in pain. I got strength that I didn't even know I had. I got muscles popping up in places that I didn't even know that I had. I'm finding strength to go on that I was not able to find. All because I trusted in God. Joshua, how are you going to take Jericho with a bunch of farmers, a bunch of slaves? Yeah. Folk that are not equipped for what it is that you got to do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to follow God's instruction. Yes. And can I tell you something? This is true. Obedience yeah. is always better yeah. than sacrifice. Because if you just look at the text, they would have set themselves up for failure. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care if they had 10,000 men. You got 10,000 men. And they got 10,000 running out with their javelins and spears ready to go. But you see, because he followed God's plan, God took the spears out of their hand. Yeah. Yeah. He took the knives and the shields out of their hand. Hey, you ain't going to have to use these. That's right. All I want you to do is shout. Give me the glory. And I will give you victory. So I wonder, I wonder who this is for this morning. You need God to make you uncomfortable. <clears throat> Lord, I'm ready to trust you. Lord, I'm ready to serve you with my whole heart, mind, soul, and body. If you're really ready for that, God is going to make you uncomfortable. Or if, you, if you're here, you're here. And you stand the guilty distance away from the Lord. You don't know the Lord in the pardon of your sin. It's time for you to be made uncomfortable. And can I tell you, I, I'm not going to be a person that stands up here and tell you that it's easy to let go of sin. Because can I tell you something? Just because one of the brothers take you back there and baptize you don't mean that you're going to come up a, a whole different person acting different. You don't want to smoke no more cigarettes. You don't want to drink no more beer. You don't want to lie. You don't want to cuss no more. It does not happen instantly like that. It's a process. It's a change. And it takes that alone with trusting in God. But changing hurts. Yes, sir. Changing. I'm, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure I said this before, that the butterfly mm -hmm. would not want to go into a cocoon. I'm, the the, the, the yeah. caterpillar yeah. would not want to go into a cocoon. Mm -hmm. I'm enjoying crawling around, eating what I'm eating and doing what I'm doing. Why is it that I got to go through a, a, this painful experience? Little does he know the beauty that awaits yes. on the other side yes, of the cocoon. And child of God, can I tell you, you do not recognize the beauty that is on the other side of pain. Because as he told Joshua and them, after the pain is over, you got victory. After you have dealt with your pain, now you can overcome and not because you're so mighty and so strong but because I the Lord am on your side so I wonder I wonder this morning who needs Jesus I wonder this morning who needs him every second 
every minute, every hour of your day. You can't make it a day without him. You can't go in the grocery store without thinking about your Jesus. You can't hit the time clock on your job without telling God, Lord, I thank you. You can't walk into your house without giving God some glory because you recognize that God fights my battles. Brings me through danger seen and unseen. So I wonder this morning, who needs the Lord? My brother, my sister, let me tell you, if you don't yet know the Lord as your Savior, if you have not yet come into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ, if you have not yet had your sins washed away by the blood of the Son of God, let me tell you, you might feel comfortable, but you're not ready for the battles that you're going to have to face. You won't be ready. Until you are on the Lord's side. So I want to know this morning, who's really on the Lord's side? Forsaking all others. You know, he said, sometimes you have to forsake mother. Come on now. Forsake father. Forsake associates and friends. If you really, really, truly want to follow him. Following Jesus pays off in the end. Because you got a crown awaiting you that will never, never, never fade away. So again, I want to know, who really needs Jesus on this morning? My brother, my sister, if you don't yet know the Lord and the pardon of your sin, if you have not yet had your, your sins washed away by the blood of the Lamb, I want to ask you, what can wash away my sin? What can make me whole again? It's in the blood. It's in the blood. You know, you, you ask, how, how is it that, that I'm contacting the blood? But it is a symbol as a sign that just as our Savior was lowered down into the earth, so we lower down to ourselves and we die to death while we are in the watery grave. And you come up, the Bible says that you rise up to walk in newness of life. The Bible says if any man be in Christ, he is a what? All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Who need God to do a new thing in your life on this morning? You need, you need to come to Jesus on this morning. I know we ain't started singing the song yet, but yet this is your invitation right here. You need, you need to come on to Jesus. Don't worry about who's looking, what folk are going to say. This is between you and God. So I want to know, I want to know, who needs Jesus? Who, who needs salvation? So I, I want to tell you, you ask me, preacher, how do I get salvation? Me laying my hands on you ain't going to do a, nothing for you. I hit you hard enough, it might hurt, but maybe put my hand on you. Ain't going to do nothing for you. No power in me. But I know who got the power. I know who got the power. And if you want to experience the miracle-working, life-changing power of God in your life, you need to come to Jesus. Come to him while the blood is running warm in your vein. Come to him while you're still in your right mind. Come to him with your hands lifted up. Father, I stretch my hands unto thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself unto me, where shall I go? Come, come hear it. Come here in the gospel. Hearing, the Bible says in Romans chapter 10 and verse number 17, so then faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Come hearing and believe it also that Jesus is the son of the living God. Come repenting of your sin, saying, God, I want you to make me clean. I want you to make me new. I want you to clean my slate. I want to be a child of God. Come hearing, come believing. Come repenting, come confessing that name, that name, not Buddha, not Confucius, not Muhammad, not no other name. Not, now let me tell you, now can't no Pope do nothing for you either. He does not have a phone in his office that has a direct line to heaven. He is not the spokesman, the mouthpiece of God. I want to let you know that. Call on the name of Jesus. My Bible says that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord of all. Come here and come believing. Come confessing. Come repenting of your sins. 
Believe God for your salvation. Amen. Be willing to be baptized yes. for the remission of your sin. Put away who you are. Put away what you desire, what you will and want. Die to your flesh and allow God's spirit to rule and reign in your life. Are you ready this morning? Are you ready? Can, can I tell you, can I tell you, we used to sing a song, I don't know y'all sing it, it said, this may be my last time. This may be my last time, children. This may be my last time. It may be my last time. I don't know. Sweetwater is the only place you get a song before the song. Can I tell you? I ain't trying to scare you. I'm just trying to inform you. Do you realize that right now at this moment, you are closer to the end of your life than you were when you got up this morning? And since you know not what your life holds, why not trust the one who holds your tomorrow? Come trusting, come believing. And if you are here, and you're already a child of God, yet you're standing in the need of prayer, you want God to make you uncomfortable in your own life. Lord, come and shake me up. Move me over. Clean me up and make me new so that I can be used by you. Is that you this morning? Is that you? If you're subject to either one of the invitations on this morning, I want you to come. Come to Jesus while the blood is running warm in your vein. Come. Believing, come trusting in God. Oh, how I love. How I love. Hello, I'm Richard Coffey, Senior Minister of Sweetwater Church of Christ. I'm here with Minister uh, Peterson. I want to introduce him who's doing the pulpit preaching here for us. Okay. Hi, Brother Javante Peterson again, Minister here at Sweetwater Church of Christ. We'd just like to take this opportunity to thank you for visiting us. We pray that you were blessed by the worship services. And if by chance you have any questions, we pray that you reach out and contact us so that we can answer any biblical questions that you have. For any Bible question that you can bring, we'll be sure to give you a Bible answer. Remember, morning Bible class starts on Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock. Worship service begins at 10. Afternoon service begins at 6 o'clock. And then midweek Bible study begins at 7. We pray that you come out at any given moment. Come out, worship with us here at the Sweetwater Church of Christ, where the gospel is preached and the water is sweet. God bless you. God bless you. <laughs>